Hello everyone, there's no caravan of garbage this week because of course we are coming up on Christmas. Happy holidays, we're bringing it back. Happy there's holidays. no garbage at Christmas, that's, that's what right. I say. So we thought people might enjoy uh, this review that we did for Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker that's non-spoiler, then spoiler. There are time codes in the description if you want to jump around a bit. This is from our podcast, The Weekly Planet. We do this every week. We've got a best and worst of the year coming up next week and there's a bunch of back catalogue stuff if you've never heard this before. We thought, hey, we don't want to leave you with nothing on a Tuesday, so why not just recycle some old crap that we did with zero effort. What do you think? That's in the Christmas spirit, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> and in the spirit of being environmentally friendly. That's right. Mm -hmm. Anyways, enjoy it. We'll be back at the end. Oh, and of course, if you could leave this a like, that'd be terrific. That would be terrific. Star Wars Episode Nine, everybody. The Rise of Skywalker. Mm. Uh, this will be a shock to almost nobody, but it flopped in China, as all Star Wars movies always do. Because of the ghosts. Because of the ghosts. Yeah, so China, as this, this is not really that relevant to uh -huh. this review, but China didn't get Star Wars when it first came out, so they have no nostalgia for it, so they just always tank. It's quite funny. Interesting. <laughs> so that's a, that's a good kind of a good barometer. Yeah. Like if something's not being powered by nostalgia, how mm. does it do? Yeah. Not well, evidently. It turns out. Okay. Uh, so the other thing is, as far as box office openings go, people, there was talk that like, this this one going to flop? Because, mm. you know, The Last Jedi was controversial and Solo bombed and et cetera and so forth. It's going to make between 175 and 200 million in the US opening weekend, which is That's a, a huge opening, mm -hmm. but it's also behind The Last Jedi's 220 million and The Force Awakens 248 million. Interesting. So... It, they, a declining return on investment there. That's right. Our investment. That's right, our investment. Uh, the response has been mixed critically. The response to it in general is varied, and it's too mm. early to kind of get an idea of, like, the, the Rotten Tomatoes user score is higher, the Metacritic is, is lower. There's, mm -hmm. I can't really get a handle on it this far in what the general consensus is, but yeah. I would say... It's more positive on the fan side than it is the critic side, I yeah, would Yeah, I would say. agree with that, yeah. yeah. There's I, a lot of people out there going, I don't know if I like this. I should watch it again. Yes, that's, that's how right. they get you. That's how they get you. Yeah, well, that's the thing. A lot of the times when these movies do well, it's repeat business. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So there's a number of reasons why this did less. Mm -hmm. There probably is a sense of, a but slight sense of Star Wars fatigue in general. Yeah. That being said, this is not a bomb. This is still a massive success. Yeah, right. I need to point that out. I think the response to The Last Jedi probably has a little bit to do with it. Well, his, and that's what's interesting, I think, is also that people's perception of why it's going to not doing as well. It depends is on. In, is entirely yeah. dependent on whether you, you like The Last Jedi it. or not. It's like not. going into a dark side cave. Yeah, right. What do you bring to it? Um, I brought like a like a life-size replica of Darth Vader. Yeah. And then you chop its head off. Really? And then its face explodes and your own face is there. You bring that with you, but they have one of those in there. Yeah, I know. It's awkward. <laughs> I'm like, should I use So your he comes out of the shadows and you're like, I've got this. You yep, yeah, just don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> and he's like, do I still get paid for this? And I'm like... No, obviously. Yeah, I brought, I brought my own. <laughs> it says B-Y-O-D-V-C. C, yeah, exactly. Yeah. W-E-H with exploding head. <laughs> What's happened? We've already, I've already lost the thread. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah, it's, it's so... Mm. I think there are people out there who are going to be like, well, it didn't do well because... People hated The Last Jedi and they're, and they're expecting this yeah. to do too poor. You know, it's going to be a, just as bad, so uh, yeah. I'm not going to go see it. And I'm sure there's also people who are going, well, I don't think this one's very good and word yes. spread that it's not very good, so I'm not going to watch and, it or and you, recommend it. And you know, I think it could also be a factor. Return of the Jedi did really well comparatively to Empire Strikes Back. I think uh -huh. it did a little bit better from memory. Uh -huh. But I think that was also because Empire Strikes Back ended on a cliffhanger yes. and The Rise of Skywalker didn't. It just kind of like... Do you mean The Last Jedi? Sorry, and The Last Jedi didn't. Yeah. Spoiler alert, the, Spoiler rise alert. Of, the Rise of Skywalker doesn't end on a cliffhanger. That's right. So I think that we didn't spend three years like they did in the 80s. Yeah, right. Being like, what is going to happen? To it fashion. Was just for, yeah, that's right. What am I going to do with all these snap bands? Bad was that the things. 80s? Yeah, that was maybe, yeah. Uh -huh. What are we going to do with these hyper-colour T-shirts? I think that was the 90s. Well, what, what are we going to do? How are we going to get them ready for the 90s? Thank you. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so I think that was also a factor. I yeah, think right. there's a number uh -huh. of factors. But also, again, these numbers aren't final. Yeah. And there'll, there'll be a drop-off as there always is after opening week. And, and there's going to be a drop-off yeah. once they instigate my new rule of you have to take away the marketing budget. And yes. Then you see how much... A movie is really Really, really worth, worth yeah. yeah. Anyways, we're going to do non-spoilers then. Spoilers. What did you think of this movie? Uh, look, finales are difficult, aren't they? They certainly are. It's difficult to just... Especially when there was already a finale of sorts in the yeah, last one. Yeah, right? Yeah. Hmm. There's some things in this that I that I really liked. Uh-huh. And I'll come back to that in spoilers. But overall, I found this pretty kind of flat and underwhelming as a, as a film. Hollow. Yeah. A lot of people have said hollow, and yeah. I feel... I, I agree with that. I think I said when we did the, the video... Mm. Uh, 
that for a lot of people, this is going to check every box to make a great Star Wars movie. Yes. And for, for other people, it just checks boxes. And to me, I felt like it just checked boxes for two hours. Yeah, right. And it was like, okay, we've got to get this person to do this. We've got to get this person to say this. Mm. We've got to fulfill a destiny. Yeah. We've got to go to a planet. We've got to see all, a bit of fan service. Yes. When I say a bit of fan, fan service, I mean a lot of fan service. Sure. And then then Easter end. egg video linked below if people want to check oh, it out. Oh, good stuff. Well. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Was that stressful? Mitch is editing it, so no. <laughs> okay, For great. him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh-huh. Look, w- one thing that I feel like about whether you like The Force Awakens, whether you like The Last Jedi, I feel like at least in those movies, it felt like everybody was acting. Sure. Whereas I feel like with a couple of notable exceptions in this movie, it feels like everybody's just saying lines. Yeah, right. Like it's just, okay, well, we've got to set this thing up and you have to say a cool thing. So... Here's your cool thing. Yeah. Okay, try it again. Cool thing. Okay, you've said the cool thing. Move on. Excellent. Move on, yeah. Yeah. Run run off frame. <laughs> right. It's a lot of that. Uh-huh. Yeah. I think I think you're right though. I think also if you really love this, which a lot of people do, great. Like honestly, really good. And I'm not trying to take that away from anybody if I didn't love it as much. Same if you really hate it. I don't want to take that away from you either. Right. Hold that in your yeah. heart, genuinely. But the thing is, I think... Hold that, that hate in your heart. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's a real Jedi-Sith situation, isn't <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. Don't let the other side sway you, because that's a trick. They try and trick you every time. I think also, as far as general audiences go, if you're not really a Star Wars fan, because that's where the money is as well, is with general, general audiences. Yeah. Not for diehard fans, it's, uh-huh. for, it's for general audiences. Well, diehard fans aren't going to see it. Of course they're, they're not. They're going to see Die Hard, because it's a Christmas movie, <laughs> and it's Christmas time. That's what they're doing right now. They're just lining up yeah. around the block to watch Die Hard in some sort of Christmas-themed yeah. theatre. They've got ho-ho-ho T-shirts on. <laughs> wearing little hats. They're holding machine guns. Exactly. Because the thing is, to a general audience, I'm not talking fans, yes. this presents like Star Wars. Like you said, there's lightsabers, there's space combat, there's revelations about who's who, there's twists and turns. Flips. Flips, obviously. That's mm-hmm. what I meant when I said twi- twists and turns. <laughs> yes. yeah. So I think this would just be the same as any other if you're yeah. a casual fan. Because yeah. it just does all of those things with villains that you've seen before. You know yeah. what I mean? Or maybe villains you haven't seen before. <laughs> yes, maybe. We'll yeah. get to that in spoilers. Get to that in spoilers. The thing is as well, I, it, there is a breakneck pace to this from the very get-go. And I didn't enjoy that aspect of it, not because I was like, what's happening? I can't follow this. It just felt kind of unrelenting for quite a lot of it. I mean, that's what a man who isn't following it would say. <laughs> yeah, sure. You know? I mean, I understand when they got to get a thing to get another thing to get the next thing to get the thing after that. Mm. All of that makes sense to me. Yes. But it was really just running from place to place, planet to planet. Yeah, it was a series of fetch quests. Yes. As, as a la a video game. Mm. But if you're not playing the video game, if you're watching somebody play a video game, yeah. I don't find that exciting at all. Yes. Uh, I think I said this in the video as well. I stand by it. Yes. This movie doesn't feel like a sequel to The Last Jedi because so much of the stuff established in The Last Jedi, yeah. especially towards the finale, they just ignore... They just well, they of, they build on some of it in odd ways. Yeah, it's right. Like to trying to make it a different series of films. Yeah, yeah. And but it also doesn't feel like if if you went okay, well, I didn't like Last Jedi, so I'll just ignore it. It doesn't feel like a sequel to The Force Awakens either, because there's so much missing in the middle. Yes. So it, this this to me feels like the sequel to the proposed Last Jedi remake, the fan made Last. Last Jedi remake, they're, which they're, at this point has has uh, has acquired four hundred and seventeen million dollars in pledges. That's nearly enough. I know, right? <laughs> For marketing I, alone, I agree. Yeah. So you know, as soon as they get permission from Disney, <laughs> notoriously protective corporation Disney, to get that remake gone. Yeah. But it feels like they've just gone. Okay, imagine in the middle, in between Force Awakens and this, there was a movie. It's the movie we all wanted. Yes. And there's flips. And there's lightsaber battles, and everybody's cool and has abs. Yes. And then throughout this, there's hints that you know certain characters are returning, and this you know there's there's hints towards what's going to happen in the third one, and this is a sequel to that. Yes. But it it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I, I, there's definitely some game breaking elements in, yeah. in here for for me as well. It's interesting you say that because spoiler alert, the emperor is back in this. I mean, if you've seen the marketing, the emperor is back in some form, right? Uh-huh, you've sure. seen the poster and whatever. Yeah. I assume. Mm-hmm. We've known for like a year. If I could make one change, and this would not fix everything, but I think it would make this movie more compelling and make more sense. Mm. What do you think you know better than Chris Terrio, the writer of <laughs> Batman v Superman and Justice League? We'll get to that. Okay, fine. All but right. that's what I'm saying. Also, that's what I'm saying. If you yeah, hold that thought, mm. that's what I'm saying. This is how Justice League felt. Because in Batman v Superman, yeah. there's a lot of weird stuff where 
Superman's like this mopey dick and Batman's out there like machine gunning people and like yeah. crushing people's heads with a Batmobile or whatever. <laughs> and when that movie finished, I'm like, that's wildly out of character. How are they going to fix that in the next one? Like what what plot elements are yes. they going to change? What, what big reveals are they going to be like, you know, to say, okay, well, actually... So Batman didn't kill anybody. He killed some robots or whatever. Mm. But in Justice League, they went, just move forward. Yeah. Don't think about what happened in the past. Yes. We'll make a movie as if none of that happened. Yeah. Keep moving. And that's the same technique they've seen employed sure. in this. I think it's better employed in this than uh-huh. it was in Justice League. But yeah, yeah right. that's a pretty apt comparison. I don't know if you play Fortnite, Mason, knowing that you do extensively and always. Oh, yeah, He's sure. playing it on his mobile telephone right now. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> he's, look, he's, he's old school, so it's one of those, you got to crank the handle kind of phone. Oh, yeah, so right. Uh-huh. You ring in and be like, turn left. That's right. Use... Use the building build tool. The, build the fort, <laughs> as is in the name. If it's night. Yes. <laughs> Obviously. But at the very start of this movie, spoiler alert for the very first thing that happens. The opening in this crawl. Movie, the opening crawl. It says that the there's a broadcast from the unknown regions from what appears to be the Emperor. Uh-huh. And they released that broadcast in Fortnite, in a Fortnite live event. That's the huh. age we live in, okay? So if you want to hear it, I've got a video about voice cameos that you can hear it in. If you oh, want to check it out. So is this, below, is this voice, is this we see this in the movie? No. Okay. And the reason, and what I'm saying is, if they had have added that to the very last scene of The Last Jedi, yeah. then I think it would have gone a lot further to make this a more comprehensible reason for the Emperor being back and not like a weird retcon that he was maybe always there the whole time. Yeah. If you at least went back one movie and went, hey, hint, hint, yeah. you might still or be Or even around. just, I mean, put it on YouTube. like so- Do a short film. Well, not even a short film. Just do it. Do a long film. Do a long (laughs) film. But do it like one of those, just put up like, go to Disney's channel or the Star Wars channel or whatever and just, you know, put it up as like test footage, not for release or something like that. And people will be like, what's this? And you click on it and it's, you know, the Emperor's. I think that works as well. I think it would have been, I mean, I think if they had thought of it, Yes. Like bring because they weren't going to bring the emperor back. That was a Colin Colin Trevorrow wasn't going to do it when he was making the movie. Yeah, right. They probably would have put it in the movie, but yeah, they could have put it in a comic or a book or, like you said, a viral marketing thing. But it's just kind of dumped in your lap at the start yeah. of this movie. And so, prepare- and it's never really rectified at how we got here. Yeah, but I and I know it will be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't think we ultimately. I don't think we need an explanation as to why he is back if there were some clues in prior movies because yes. he's a villain it doesn't I don't, I don't need to know the exact specifics of like well force magic and clones and blah 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 and all that yeah. I don't I don't need to know the rules specifically yeah. but if there was some element if there were clues throughout the previous two movies and then he returns in this one I'd be like okay yeah but, and again we are, we are going to get retcons in the future in comic book form or we're going to get it. People are, you know, J.J. Abrams is going to be asked about stuff. Forever. In, forever. They're going to be like, okay, in Force Awakens, when mm. we see this clip or this character looking to the left, what are they looking at? And yeah. he'll be like, the Emperor. The Emperor was there. The Emperor was there, obviously. Yeah. Of course yeah, he's he was given there. the thumbs up off screen. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, go, go evil. <laughs> yeah. Evil forever. Yeah. You mentioned Chris Terrio, though, and this feels more Batman v Superman than The Force Awakens is because The Force Awakens was co-written by Lawrence Kasdan who worked on both Return of the Jedi but more famously Empire Strikes Back. Mm. And he reigned in a lot of the craziness and ideas of George Lucas and kind of streamlined them, right? I see. And I feel like a lot of the reason why The Force Awakens works well for me, I know it's not for everybody, as a, re- as a soft reboot and a continuation, I think it does, mm-hmm. is because it feels more like it brings in those key elements of Star Wars more naturally Whereas this feels like kind of herky jerky, bit herky jerky in terms, of, in terms of storytelling. You know what I mean? I think yeah. bringing back Lawrence Kasdan would have gone a long way to making this more in line with the previous movies. Because I think even if you hate the Last Jedi, which we don't, mm-hmm. leave your comments. But <laughs> <laughs> I think there is still a natural progression there. Yes. Where, again, whether or not you might disagree, but I think whether or not you like it or not, I feel like it's still like, okay, what came before and how can we extend on that? Mm-hmm. Even if you don't agree, but this feels like what came before, how can we fix that? Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Yeah. I feel like again, a, a lot of this a lot of this movie feels to me not like, okay, what can we do in this scene to make it the most thrilling? Mm. It's what can we do in this scene that will upset the least number of yeah. people. I think they were like, okay, in every scene we've got a choice between A and B. Yes. A will upset fewer people. Yes. And it'll it'll 
it's it's the most status quo kind of thing. Yeah. So let's do that. And they just did it for two hours. Absolutely. Yeah. I think a really good example of that is where there's going to be a big battle at the end. And Dominic Monaghan's character says, why don't we just do the Holdo maneuver? Uh-huh. You know, like in The Last Jedi, he says, that was rad. Uh-huh. Like, and it looked good visually, he yeah, said. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. It made a real impact on the universe. Remember that time was real quiet? Yeah. And then it was quiet. It was quiet. And someone's like, that was one in a million. That would never work or whatever again. Mm-hmm. It's not one in a million. It's turning a ship and pointing at another ship. Right. I, I think if you've never flown a spaceship, you could do that. Right. Right. Uh-huh. I mean, it's a, there's probably a button for it. There's probably a button turn for it. In, it. Turn it in one direction and then shoot yeah, it off. Yeah, you probably have to turn some safeties off or whatever, yeah, right. I'd uh-huh. imagine. But like, you don't need to go out of your way to be like, don't even worry about that because we're not going to do that again. That's something that happened and mm-hmm. you don't need to explain a way why you're not doing it again. Right. You're just not doing it. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, you're not doing it because mm. they don't do the exact same thing in every movie every time, except for the time they blow up the Death Star three times. But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Mm. Uh, so Princess Leia's returned. Yep. I feel it looks flawless. Yeah. Uh-huh. If you watch the original scenes and there's some of them available deleted scenes, like they've completely changed her outfit and the setting and it just looks like she's there. So this is, so this is unused footage from previous movies. Mm. And they Force Awakens specifically. Okay, they right. Like eight and minutes of footage, and they've or and they've recontextualized the stuff she said. Yes, and they've put different actors yes up against her, and they've changed changed her clothes and and outfits and stuff. That being said, yes. it looks like when you go online and you get like a Darth Vader voice sampler. Yeah, and it's like the Force is strong with you or whatever. And she's like, someone goes to her, Princess Leia, what should we do? And she's like, Well, if we just believe in ourselves. You know what I mean? Yeah, it just feels right, like right. it feel look, it feels it's like whatever they had. It's the jerky boys. <laughs> it's you call up the a pizza place. You got your arm. And they're like, what would you like? And and you're like, I would like you to believe in yourself. And they're like, okay, but what kind of pizza would you like? <laughs> the force is strong with you. Yeah, I know, but just <laughs> what pizza do you want? And they're like, ha, 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 yeah. jerky boys. Are they still doing it? I don't know. They they are, they're rotary phones. Yeah. But do, am I wrong in thinking that? No. I think it's you're in a tough position. Yeah. What do sure. you do? Yeah. Because they were really because an element of this movie is that she plays like a role in Ray's training, mm-hmm. and I think that that was probably the original idea yep. to get her in and have her as like the new mentor. Uh-huh. And they do a little bit of it, but there's only so much you can do with fourteen lines of dialogue. Yeah. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. 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 I mean, the jerky boys would say otherwise, but <laughs> sure. Well, they're they're, they're got, not still around. They're an art unto themselves. That's basically. true. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> They're like the Banksy of crank phone calls. <laughs> so there is an. Um, uh, this is probably a more spoiler thing, so we might have to jump over to that. But there is in, some inclusions of some new force powers one, or an extension of. Yes. You feel that works okay? I think that works for the most part. Yeah. yeah. I think though we should just jump into spoilers. Okay, but first of all, before mm. we do that, I, uh, we got we got some more positives. I think we talked about it in the, in the video, but it's nice to have uh, Poe and Finn and Ray back together. Yes. I think that's good. They're a good team up. They're yes. a good throuple. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. It's it's fun to have them all together. They look like they might kiss each other at any point. That yeah. chemistry is sizzling oh hot. Oh my god, it's sizzling hot. <laughs> <laughs> They're swapping jackets. <laughs> They're probably swapping pants. They're probably swapping pants. Um. So that's good. Adam Driver's good in this movie. He is. Yeah. It's good. Good solid work. Yeah. Uh, I, I think he gets treated the best in this, and I think Ray gets treated the worst. No, Kelly Marie Tran gets treated the oh, worst. Oh, she absolutely. Sorry, I'd forgotten. <laughs> I'd forgotten she was in this movie. So, look, I don't think this is a spoiler. If you don't, if you didn't want Kelly Marie Tran in this movie, you're in luck. If you wanted her off Twitter on and off this movie, you, yeah. you pretty much got your wish. Because in this movie, they're like it, and it even it even feels like it's not just that she's just in the background for some yeah. of it. Or she's you know seen doing another mission somewhere. They they there's they make a point of having a scene where I think Finn says you're going to come on this mission, yeah. and she's like, nope, got to look at some plans, got to look at some star destroyer schematics. I have to stay here and, the interesting, and not be in this movie. And the, the interesting thing is, there's an element at the end of where you could have reintroduced her because she is a starship expert. Mm-hmm. Like in the last one, she works out where the signal is coming from uh-huh. on, with with Finn's help, of course. And they don't give that role to her. Yeah, right. They give it to a different character. Mm-hmm. And that, to me, feels kind of... Look, even if you love or hate that character, I think that's still a missed opportunity to be like, well, this person in this universe is established to know this particular yeah, thing. Yeah, right. So maybe you want to at least have her like mention yes. the, the idea or of Or maybe it. she could be like... <laughs> I'm busy. Yeah. Why don't you get the second best person? <laughs> this rando. Yeah, that's right. And uh, similarly, there, you know, 
people have for since the Force Awakens come, has come out, they've been like uh, Finn and Poe should get together, mm. and they're like, well, we we're not going to do that, but yeah. there is definitely going to be some LGBT, Q, IA, etc. Representation in this movie at the end, yeah, just two ladies kiss an absolute coward's move, <laughs> right? Because I think I saw people talking about it as well that is this to appease the Chinese market because you can just cut it out really quickly, mm-hmm. but they don't do well in China, yes, yeah, so as we've just yeah. talked about. So, uh-huh. I, I mean, but at the same time, because of the threat that Finn and yeah. Poe will kiss, <laughs> that's right, at any moment, the, the tension's too sizzling. But I feel like, for one, it's I know it's baby steps, yeah, you know what I mean, in a, in a big film like this. Mm-hmm. You gotta ease people into it. Right. You know what I mean? It's babies. Babies. That's why yeah. you need the baby steps for yeah. babies. But then again, I feel like also audiences are okay with this kind of stuff right. for the most part. Uh-huh. And if not, it's the world we live in. Like, sure. It's, yeah, but I think the natural progression it maybe would have been interesting to hint something about Poe and Finn. But then again, also, are you just doing fan service then? All oh, right. And the okay. other thing is, and I saw an interesting criticism of having those two get together is it kind of undermines the point that. Two men can be friends and affectionate and kind to each other. That and, is true. And big each other up without being like, well, they're gay, aren't they? Right. You know what I mean? So uh-huh. I think there's also, that's a very valid point. Mm. You know, to be like, well, you can only be like that if you love somebody and you want to kiss them. You know that's what I mean? That's true, right? So, yeah. you know, it's there's a number of ways you could look at it, but it's still a coward's move. It's to put that right. kiss in, yeah. Uh, also, I think, I think Ray's character arc is kind of, I think she's, she's treated kind of shabbily. We'll get to it in... in well, let's do spoilers. Let's do spoilers. I, I, I think, yeah. I look, I think that you know her entire character arc was you know in Force Awakens, it's who are my parents, and in the second one, it was who well, are my parents? Who are my parents? <laughs> but it turns out they're nobodies. Yeah. But your parent, who your parents are, isn't important. Yeah. It's who you are and who you are now, and what you're going to do with yeah. your life now. Spoilers. Spoilers. Here's the spoiler point where we're going to talk about spoilers. Oh, best movie ever or worst movie ever. I might just I might just talk through this and then I'll. I'm gonna say I still don't I'm know. gonna say worst movie ever. Yeah. And look, it's not it's not it's not a terrible movie, but I feel like again, it just felt very trite to me, and just mm. people saying their lines till they got to the end. Yeah. And just the space battles, the lightsaber fights, they were there, but the, to me, they I weren't thought, interesting. Yeah, I agree. I think, I mean, love or hate the last Jedi. Mm-hmm. I think there's there's a, like a simplicity to the space battles and this is and and even land battles or whatever and this is just chaos like a million ships and a million horses they even <laughs> be, they're even like we've built ten thousand starships and uh-huh. but the last Jedi was like you had a row of like ATSTs and some speeders and yeah, right. even the space stuff wasn't like it had Poe against one star destroying you but yeah. this is just like imagine there were a million Tie Fighters you yeah, know I th- and I think imagine a million yeah, ships right. show up that's much point. more dangerous than what was before. <laughs> It's bigger and more. The yeah. stakes are higher than ever. You're right, and I think it feels more in line with, say, Empire to have just a line of yeah. ATATs. One of the things I didn't like about the Force Awakens was that final space battle. Yeah, just like we're going up against Star Killer Base, and it's the biggest thing ever. But when there's a <laughs> Remember million the Death Star ships. was bigger than the Death Star. <laughs> yeah. It's a million Death Stars. Yeah. So spoilers. That's one of the things I didn't like about this, where they're like. You know how we got rid of the Death Star? Well, guess what? There's a thousand Death Stars. And just so you know it's a Death Star, we're just going to blow up this planet just quick, yeah? Yeah, just, See that just planet? quick, yeah? yeah. As that was happening, I'm like, am I supposed to know what this is? Like, what mm. planet is this? Is there anyone on there that I know? It was a planet that was mentioned earlier, but I think it was mentioned... I think it was a planet they were on mm. earlier in the movie for okay. a minute. But again, they bounce between so many planets. Yeah. And again, planets like Fauna in the in the... Star Wars universe, completely disposable. Kill anything. There's always plenty of them left, so don't even worry about it's it. It's amazing they didn't kill that snake monster. Yeah, They right. kill literally every oh, I other about monster. The snake monster, yeah. <laughs> what do you think about force heal in this or force transfer your energy into another well, I person think didn't, thing? Yeah. I, um, it's already Mandalorian. It showed up this week as well. Well, I think that's why it showed up in the Mandalorian. Yeah. To, to I'm go. surprised it kind of tied in uh, like at all. Let alone, I mean, it's only a little thing, but yeah. Mm. Yeah, mm. I've written here... Uh, final order destroys a planet we've encountered an hour ago. So, oh, okay. Yeah, so there you that's, go. That's pretty good. Also, it's the final order. What happened to the second order? Third order? Um, a thousand ships, Mason! That's right. No, it was because it was a thousand ships. Mm. I think Richard E. Grant says something like, this will increase our force 10,000 fold. Mm. And I'm like, don't you have like a million as is? What's the, what, are, what are the numbers here? Mm. <laughs> give, me a, give me a rough estimate, Richard E. Grant. Yeah, come on, Richard E. Grant. Yeah. So they brought him in because so, Hux wasn't threatening anymore, I assume. I guess so. He's become sort yeah. of this fast. And that's a, that's a last Jedi kind of 
that's something that they did. And yeah, right. What do you do? You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Speaking of being disposable. So a lot of people have mentioned this, uh, that Anakin's sacrifice at the end of uh, Return of the Jedi, where he throws Emperor Palpatine down at Big Tube. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then goes, am I forgiven? And everyone goes, I mean, technically, yes. (laughs) All right. So he brings balance to the force. Yeah. I guess- Because they weren't alive when he killed all those kids, probably. (laughs) Yeah, probably were. They they didn't see the hollow feed. Mm. So do you think that- that then negates the idea that he brings balance to the force. I don't he even know. Me- because he mentions in this, because yes. there's voice cameos. Uh-huh. I've got a video on it. Okay. That bring balance to the force as I did. But if the emperor was still alive, you, you didn't, didn't balance nothing. Yeah. Right? Speaking of balance, mm. there's a scene in this. They're like, we've, we've, you can't possibly destroy these star destroyers with your ships. We, we, we've got shields and lasers and stuff. And you, we've got a million lasers. You can't <laughs> possibly destroy this star destroyer. So they're like, let's do this old school. And they bring on like space beasts, yeah. some sort of like pack animals. And they all like horses and they go up on the star destroyer and they destroy it that way. Just tip the Star Destroyer to one side, I reckon. <laughs> everybody who, everybody out there, again, we, I'm going to say this a lot. Whether you like The Last Jedi or not, there are people out there who are like, yeah, well, remember the start of The Last Jedi when the bombs fall? And there's no <laughs> gravity in space, so how can the bombs hit the thing? It's it's ridiculous. There's no, I don't know nothing about it. Just tip the Star Destroyer to one side. They'll fall off. <laughs> this will all fall off. I didn't think of that. Just fall off, They'd I fall reckon. Off. Yeah. They're not horses with octopus tentacles that stick to things, are right? they? What they did, they took actual horses and put masks on them. That's right. So they're just regular horses. Yeah. Hooved and feeten. That's right. Hooved and feeten. Hooved and feeten. Yeah. Mm. So I saw this from Jenny Nicholson on Twitter, who you might know. If she does a, she's got a YouTube channel. Does a lot of great stuff. Some of it's Star Wars related. So the idea is that the emperor who survived, I made a video on how he may have done that because they don't explain it. I think what happened is mm. he fell down the, the exhaust port or whatever it was. Yeah. And he landed on that arm. Yeah. You know, that we see in this movie. He just got stuck on it. Yes. And then he just got some of his men to move the arm to that planet. He must have surfed the explosion out of there like a rad cool dude. I think so, yeah. Like Pierce Brosnan and he died the other day. Yeah. Yeah. So some people are saying... Hag Ted, do it. (laughs) So some... Do it. (laughs) Hag Ted. (laughs) Some people are saying that that's the original Emperor's body and that's why it's propped up because it was recovered. But he didn't seem to have the scarring of the original emperor. So I think it's supposed to be a clone. There's another theory that that's the original, original emperor. And he's always been projecting himself into that body. So when you killed the emperor, you didn't kill the real emperor. You killed. Oh, he was somewhere else. Somewhere else. So the idea is also that he created Snoke. You see a tank of Snokes. (laughs) Just some spare Snokes. It's a Snoke heavy tank. Yeah. uh Yeah. Just like a, just like a lobster tank at a restaurant. (laughs) They're all just in there like, Oh, I hope I don't get sacrificed. (laughs) Hope I don't get pulled out of the tank and forced to be, Head of the first order for a bit, and then I get <laughs> cut to pieces with a lightsaber. If I'm going to be sacrificed, I want to choose a golden robe. If I'm yeah. going to go out, <laughs> that's right, <laughs> the grand style. That that means he's capable of just cloning incredibly powerful force users, or at least channeling his body, his energies through it. So, do you think? So, in this is, was I think it's a physical puppet, and he's controlling it. Uh, I don't know because right. they don't explain they it. They don't explain it. It's true. But I think if he can talk through Darth Vader's mask using his voice, right? Maybe it's got his consciousness in it, and he's yeah. just got a few of them. Mm. But how is he? How is he tricked by the lightsaber thing? Then anyway, it doesn't matter. We'll get to that. Okay, Jenny Nicholson says says that. Why, if you did create Snoke, there's an obvious answer to this is because that wasn't always the origin for Snoke. Yes. Why wouldn't you create somebody more handsome and, and less like a ghoul? Right? You know? Yeah. You'd you'd bring in a handsome, good-looking human being who didn't look like a literal monster. Yeah. Just a towering goomba of a... You know, like, what is it? Right. Like, it doesn't look like anything else in the galaxy. Bring in a character who, when they walk into a room, you don't go, what's with his face? <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. You know? I think that's a good point. Yeah, right? That I didn't make. But or yeah. they, they walk into the room and you go, what's with his slippers? <laughs> <laughs> Why are they turned up at the ends? <laughs> 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 anyway. You know what's interesting about this movie is? Yes. There are about three death fake outs. I, uh, I've had I've got written here. I, I wrote it in. Pro, I've, what both of us did this week is we just open up a notes thing on our phones, and just every time we thought of something that made no sense, yeah, we just put it in. That's exactly. So pre spoilers, I've written 
suggests consequences but never follows up on it. Yes. And then below here, I've get I've gotten che- well. Chewbacca appears to be destroyed in the in the for transport explosion. Yeah, for a minute. And they don't know for ten minutes. Yes. But we find out like a minute later. Yeah, right. Yeah. I don't want Chewbacca to die. No. But if you're gonna do it, commit to commit it. Commit to him. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, he dies. They in- committed to Akbar dying, and I wasn't happy about. <laughs> That's right. It. <laughs> but yeah, this is what it is. Yeah. And and you know, uh, Chewie dies eventually in the. The Legends yeah, canon. Hit by a moon. Hit by a moon, exactly. So, I mean, I would have been like, oh, okay, so it's a parallel to the yeah. the old books, you know. But, uh, yeah, and also, I again, I'd have to watch it again to find out. But it looks to me, uh, there, there was no clues, I don't think. That there was a second that ship? That there was a second ship. No. They just put him on the ship and then it's blown up. And then it's like, oh, but there was a second ship. It, fi- it feels like they filmed it and they were like... How do we get out of this? Yeah. Just say there was a second, was ship. A second ship. Is there a time to film another thing? No. No. Their their process is just keep writing scenes and never go backwards. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Just be like, and then they've just written, just say there was another ship and move forward. They did it on a typewriter. Yeah. You no to, way to go. You back. have to white it out. You have to do white difficult. out. Yeah. Well, you have to scroll it back up and put X's through yes. everything. Yuck. That brings me to the Knights of Ren, though. I do want to talk about more fake outs, but yes, the Knights of Ren have kind of been built up in movies and in these movies and, and neglected on the whole. Yes, and I think why would you introduce something and then I think maybe they should have been the Imperial Guards from the Royal Guards from the last one. Uh-huh. I'm sure JJ Abrams had a plan to do something with them at some point. And but boy has he, boy has he. So some what dudes? So what it turns out, or girls, or girls. Mm-hmm. So what it turns out that they are is they handcuffed Chewbacca off screen. That's and then pretty badass. There's a moment where they circle Kylo Ren and beat him up. Yep. And then he gets a weapon and he kills them all. Yes. That that's the arc. Quite of easily. The Knights of Ren. Yeah. Yeah. So. But I mean, you know, a bunch. Of, you know, even though they were they were there and gone, a bunch of they class- just had axes. I was going to say a bunch of classic <laughs> characters. Remember Axe Guy. Remember Mesh Mask. All I remember was Axe Guy. I can't remember <laughs> the other weapons, but I remember one guy having an axe and being like, "All yeah. right, cool." There, there is a comic on it at the yeah, moment, okay. which uh-huh. kind of explains their origin and. It's quite good, and it's been one issue, and I, I recommend it. But you know, maybe you want to flesh that out a bit more in the movies. That being said, <laughs> maybe I am, you do. But it is a good. Maybe you want to flesh out some movie characters in a movie. Yeah, it's good. It's from good comic creators, so I'm happy to also read that. But most people won't. aren't going to. Yeah. yeah, but at least it gives them the opportunity to tell this interesting story. Because a lot of the times with Star Wars stories and comics and books, you, there's a lot of things that you cannot say. And I think now that this trilogy C- is done, the C word, the C word for one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But that's all their names that's in the Knights of Ren series. <laughs> <laughs> They're all just C word one to six or however many there are. C word axe guy. Yeah. C word spear guy. <laughs> in the first two, they were like these terrifying presences and we, we you know... They're always one step ahead of the good yeah. guys, and they show up at a town, and they've the Knights of Ren. You just see the Knights of Ren just massacring a town, yeah. and then taking off. Then at the end, when it's like we massacred all of them, we're going to massacre you, Kylo Ren. Yes, and then and they beat him up, and then he turns the tables on him. Yeah. That would be people would be thrilled by that. Yeah. But it's just some rando dudes we've seen for a, thirty seconds at a time in the last two movies. Well, not even the second one. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. In the first movie. Yeah. And then they're back. Who cares? Who cares? It, they're just like a wave of random stormtroopers. Yeah. It's like they're stormtroopers, but they've got black armor they're on. They're grosser. Because yeah. they've got like weird gross suits or they whatever. They have gross suits, yeah. Yeah, and I also cannot tell them apart. Yeah. Like at all. I think even with like, if you look at the Imperial Guards, if you look at like Phasma, uh-huh. I know who they are when I look at them. Right. You yeah. know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I only know who the Knights of Ren are if there's seven of them standing in a row. And I'm like, well, that must be if yeah. there is seven of them. Yeah. I don't know. Grumpy, sleepy, axy, sea <laughs> <Yep>. bomb. <laughs> That's grumpy. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Okay, so the other death makeouts are Kylo Ren is about to die, and yep. then he doesn't. I mean, he does anyway. Mm-hmm. And C three PO gets his memory wiped, and it's a great sacrifice. And then he gets his memory back, back and it's fine. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm. Would have been. You know what? Again, if if this is allegedly the finale, yes, you could even bring his memory back in the next one. Mm. You could be like, oh, the, the memory the memory reboot failed yeah. in this. Isn't that sad? But he made the ultimate sacrifice. That's what we want from C-3PO. Yeah. You know, this is why he's been around I the whole time. I thought he was good in this. Yeah, I did too. And I think that I think he wasn't really used in the last movies that well. Yeah, but this right. one he was. Yeah. And in, 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 at the very least, you'd go, oh, of course that you know he's been he's you know he's this this weird little android this whole time. Mm. And but he's that's the reason he's here because he's, yeah. he is a hero like the rest of them. But it, and and I guess he was, but also. But let's reverse it straight away. I really like the idea also that his programming dictated that he couldn't translate Sith text. Mm. I think that's interesting and I think it's funny. Yeah. And I think also, like you said, you could wipe his memory and then maybe in the next trilogy, which they will do at some yeah. point, and they'll probably fix a bunch of shit from this or try yeah, to, yeah, I yeah. imagine. Yeah. 
that you could be like, we need this critical piece of data from him because he was around during the prequels or whatever. Uh-huh. And then you could bring it all back then. Yeah, right. You uh-huh. know what I mean? It's not a huge loss at the end if C-3PO, a character we won't see for 10, 20 years, doesn't remember some shit. Like, it yeah. doesn't matter, really. You could even do it like Search for Spock style where yeah. you maybe they attempt the memory you know, reboot or whatever, the, the backup, and it doesn't work. And they have and to put pointy ears on it. Exactly, him. that's right, as antennae. But then, and you know, you think it's gone and yeah. then, or even like, you know, they've done it with data as well. You think the memory's gone, but then you can see snippets. Yes. Like it, ret- it's, it seems to return in snippets and you go, well, he'll be back one day kind yeah. of thing. That would be nice. Is it data or data? Data. Yeah, Picard says data. <laughs> so that's what we're going with. Great, terrific. Data. I thought it was strange that they were like, oh, Poe Dameron has a checkered past. He was a smuggler. And people yep. were like, well, that's outrageous. Is it? No, I'm just a smuggler. It doesn't <laughs> where matter. Where are you getting the rest? Where, where are the rest of these rebel pilots yeah. coming from? Exactly. They're all terrible people. Where's Greg Grunny Grunberg from? He yeah. grew up in the resistance, apparently, from the comics or whatever. Uh. But he's dead. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There exploded. you go. There's a sacrifice. Great. But, <laughs> great. Yeah, I like that character, but I didn't care when he died. Was he in the previous two? Yes. No, the previous one. Okay. Uh, the Force Awakens. Poe Dameron also, I mean, I, I, I'm so sure he, he just, So Abrams just brought back his mates, yeah, basically. That's okay. fine. I don't have a problem I guess, with that. sure. But it's because he's like the Wedge Antilles, which we'll talk about. But um, <laughs> Poe Dameron in the comics, and this is, I think a lot of this stuff wasn't factored into this movie. He He's the son of two rebel soldiers who were at the Battle of Endor oh, and knew Luke Skywalker. Okay. So I guess he went off and did some smuggling stuff or whatever. But to be like, he's got this checkered past, it's to me it's like it's like a rich kid who deals some weed and then just gets a job in a law firm because his parents did. Like, yeah, right, I mean? uh-huh. That's about as interesting as that is to yeah, me. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? I still like that character. He's sure. got great hair. Oh, my God, does he ever. <laughs> does he ever, <laughs> yeah. I just saw this interesting tweet. Uh, it's from Chase Mitchell. It says, It's a shame Kelly Marie Tran died after making The Last Jedi, but I'm glad JJ tried to make the most of the footage they had left of her. Brutal. <laughs> Yeah. Here's a question. Yes, I'm ready. What's with that Sith dagger? I mean, I know it's a dagger. Yeah. And it's got a thing that you click out. Case closed. But you stand at any point near the Death Star. Yes. And you line it up with whatever's left of it. And it will point exactly to the thing you need to be in. Yep. Don't you think it'd be better if it, like, unlocked a door? Maybe. Don't you think it would have been better if they held it up in a glowed when it went over the thing they were supposed to be? You know what would have been better? Mm. If it was just a piece of paper and it said, go to this point on the Death Star. (laughs) Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That works too. It would say on the top of it, it'd say, uh, Rebel Forces don't read this. Final Order Forces. P- PTO. Yeah. <laughs> PTO. Uh, go to this bit and get the cool stuff. Yeah. Dark Ray, right? What'd you think? Uh, yep. They did it. Great. They sure did. They, uh, they sure did. did. Yeah. Also, I thought it was very straight. This is just a list of things I am just thought was odd. Yeah, yeah. So the ultimate sacrifice that Kerry Russell made, she had a magic coin, which meant she could go anywhere. Yep. And she gave it to Poe Dameron so we could land in the hangar of a Star Destroyer. Okay, I've written here. They're constantly landing in hangars of Star Destroyer. That's what I'm talking about. Here's the thing. So I've written here. I know there's less guards, but it's never a problem. Yeah. Well, I've written here, James. What I've written here. Okay. I've written Imperial Coin versus Mandalorian. And what I mean is there was an episode recently of The Mandalorian. I think we talked about it last week. Sure. It's the one where they have to get on the prison ship. Yeah. And it's Richard Ayoade's droid. Yes. He's just like, okay, we're going to do this and this and we're going to zip around and we're going to go above their their shield, well, above their sensors and we're going to drop down. And it's ex- it's fun and it's exciting and they don't need... And they explain it in 10 seconds. Yeah, and they don't need an Imperial coin. And I feel like the second one is way more... That feels way more Star Wars. Yeah. And, and kind of, you know, fun and, and sort of space cowboy-ish than... You collect a coin and then you go to a place and you insert the coin in the thing. And, and they then, just let you... And they just let you in. doesn't it, matter what you're flying. Yep. <laughs> this ship covered in sand. Well, what happens is you plug the coin in. It's got a big in. snake bite in the yeah, side of it. exactly. <laughs> you plug it in and it says, uh, Final Order, don't read this. <laughs> just let him in. Yeah. <laughs> Rebel Forces PTO, got him. <laughs> got him, mate. Got him. Anyway, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this is... Um, I'm going to talk about some Palpatine stuff. Okay, I'm ready. So it turns out that Princess Leia, General Leia, and maybe Luke, yes. I, it seems, knew that she was a Palpatine uh-huh. and decided to train her anyway, which I understand because you're not who your parents are, or in this case, your grandparents are, because your dad is Darren Palpatine. I yeah, guess. Your, your parents are no one. I mean, one of them was the son of the Emperor, <laughs> and we're not going to get into that at all, yeah. are we? I mean, did he give birth to his son? Is that... Yeah. Palpatine, okay. He's probably, from from that, that, he's probably got from a tube of them. Thing. He's got a tube of them. Yeah, right, see? Uh-huh. 
Yeah, so he had a son, Darren or Derek, Derek, Derek. That's a Star Wars name. Yeah, sure. Uh-huh. Derek Palpatine. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's set, it's not said in the movie, I believe, but I think it is the father that's the son, I believe, or maybe it is said. I don't know. It is the father. No, it is. Yeah. Okay, yeah, fair yeah. enough. But you don't want to tell Luke Skywalker, having lived through being withheld a piece of information about what his heritage was, and then, and then getting being stung getting with it at the worst possible moment, fucking blindsided right. after getting his hand cut off. Yep. Even afterwards, he was like, "What the hell, man? Like, you knew I was walking into that. Yeah. You told me you couldn't help, but you right. could have helped mm. by giving me that one critical piece of information. And what Ray's going to do is, is Ray would be like, "Why didn't you tell me that crucial piece of information?" And they'd be like. Because that wasn't going to happen <laughs> two years ago. It was going to be a different thing. So we didn't know at the time because we're not real people. We're just characters. We're being written by different writers. We gain the information as you do, Ray. You're not even real either. What's going on? Anyway, I feel like the review... And then he just screams and then it pulls back and it's just a set on the Disney lot. <laughs> Some of the extras just having coffee. And- yeah. <laughs> Uh, but we talked about before how the whole de- t- takes away from the destiny thing and, and like it adds that element of, which I think is not as interesting. I, what I think is interesting about the Ryan Johnson reveal is that that's the he, may, he went out of his way to make sure it was the worst possible thing that she could hear. She wants to hear, I'm Han Solo's daughter. I'm Luke Skywalker's daughter. I'm somebody important's mm. daughter. We're all someone's daughter. We're, We're all someone's, someone's son. son. Exactly. How long can we'll we look, look at, at each, each other, other down the barrel oh. of a... Weird space binocular. <laughs> I was going to say one of those big guns off the Star Destroyer because they're all a Death Star now. They're all a Death they're Star. They're all a Death Star. Yeah. So I think that's interesting because that's a crippling piece of information. But also she didn't really know who the Emperor was, surely. No. I mean, she'd barely heard of Luke Skywalker. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure she would have known who the previous Hitler was. I mean, yeah, everybody well, I guess that's true. Yeah. What if they'd been like, Ray, your father is... That guy from the first movie who was like, one quarter portion. <laughs> She'd be like, oh, gross. Dad. Yeah. Why do you give me more portions? <laughs> okay. I, yeah, that's a good point. No special treatment. You yeah, know I, I guess mean? that's probably no true. No favours. Yeah, yeah, yeah I you, guess. Mate, you, grow, you grow them up tough. Yeah, that's but true. This is a question I'm genuinely asking people and I want to know the answer to. Mm-hmm. Even if you hated The Last Jedi, which is yes. fine, and I don't have a problem with that at all. Uh-huh. Just tip the spaceship. Yeah, just tip the spaceship, <laughs> obviously. But The horses would fall off. Yes. Is this a better reveal that she's somebody than being nobody? Yeah. Does this fix anything for you? Put aside whether you love or hate it. Is yeah. this mm. better? Because mm. for me, whatever way you look at it, and obviously it's my opinion, I, do, I cannot see for me how it is. Yeah. And again, it just it just goes back to it's important who your family is. Yeah. This is the only reason you're not a speck in this universe yeah. is because you're the granddaughter of this incredibly evil man. Mm. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be doing it. You'd still be a scavenger yes. on this planet or whatever or, or just nobody. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I just, I'm just i curious to know what people think about that. Yeah. Let's talk more about the Emperor. Okay. Because his master plan is yes. uh, you strike him down yep. and then you get all his power by you. He's going to go into you and then... He's going to But also all the Sith are in you. Which yeah. I believe is not really a thing for... This is again goes back to like canon and things that George Lucas said. There's only ever two and the reason the Sith are obsessed with cheating death is, is because there is definitively no afterlife for them. The uh-huh. Jedi can live on, but if you if you like this certain lifestyle, let's say... Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Like a Scientologist, there's just hell for you afterwards. I understand, There's nothing sure. there for you at yeah. the end, is my mm, point. Yeah. It's the same as Scientology. Do you like black leather and red lightsabers? Then yeah. Stay alive as long as possible. <laughs> That's right. So I don't feel like there would have been a million Sith to go in. Who are all those guys anyway? doesn't matter. <laughs> Someone had to build the spaceships, Yep, didn't they? Yeah. But so she absorbs all the Sith and gets the power. But also I feel like he's not the kind of guy to give up his power or his body or his mind to be one of a billion in another person. I was was I I I assumed that his plan was that he would be the dom because he's been around the longest. Oh, he's I the guess. dom. Yeah, he's the dom exactly. Mm. That he he is the the major force. He would be the major force in his body. So I I would my assumption was that he was banking on he would take control of Ray. Yeah, you probably on some right. Light, yeah. On some level, okay. Fair. But also his plan is, Ray, if you kill me, if you chop me up with your lightsaber, <laughs> I'll go into your body and and take over your body and and that's and sucked in. Yeah, you won't like it. But later, if <laughs> you whip out a second lightsaber and you come at me by believing in yourself. <laughs> and, you, and you zap me back with my energy. I've got all the Sith in me. Yeah. You've got all the Jedi in you. Then we scream at each other. We scream at each other. There's, 
I'll absorb all your power, but there's too much power. <laughs> yes. Then that won't happen. Yes. So it's just a it's it's a method. Mm. If I chop you up, if yeah. you chop me up, yes, you're doomed. Yes. But if you do the you melt my face, then you're scar. fine. Yeah, it's fine. Pretty good melt melting. Killing's killing. In, Killin's is, killing. Far, yeah, that's right. I, I hear you. I completely agree. Right. But the wave of energy. Oh, it's a wave it's like of energy. It's like when Gohan defeated Cell, right? The first time they blasted him, Cell was able to regenerate from a single cell. Oh, hence the name. Hence the name Cell. Huh. But when he really blasted him, mm-hmm. he wasn't able to regenerate because even the cells wow. were, were disintegrated. Huh. He should have had smaller cells. I agree. Yeah. 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 We should have <laughs> kept some cells somewhere else, like in a box or whatever. Yeah. Or in a cell. Yeah. In a cell. Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Or in the fridge. That's right. Yeah. It's, a, it's the perfect place. Mm. But yeah, that whole thing of like, you'll never stop me. Well, what if I have two lightsabers? Oh, actually, <laughs> that's that's two, isn't yeah. it? That's quite a lot. Mm. Because she's still <laughs> trying to kill him. I, yeah, I'm with right? you. I don't yeah. disagree. I can't, it's I, not a case of, well, I don't have an argument no, against that, it. No, but I'm saying I'm, it, it, the, the logic in the movie seems to be, well, I'm the emperor trying to kill you with my with my lightning. Yes. But if, I, but if you bounce that back to me yeah. and kill me with it, it doesn't count. Yes. But it should count. Yeah. Because you could just dodge out of the way and not kill him. Do a dodge roll. Yeah. But if you're just coming at him, you're still killing yeah. him, you know? What did you feel about the uh, the Jedi cameos, though? I've got a video on it. I mentioned it. Um, was there? Was there I felt it was a bit muddled. Yeah. I mean, you can recognise Luke. Yeah. Because he's in the movie. <laughs> yeah, he's in a lot of these. Uh, but some of the other ones, I'm like, is that supposed to be? Is Mace that Qui-Gon? Window, you, you probably. I can recognise, I can recognise yeah. Mace Window. I've got a list, and I've okay. got actually what everybody says. I've okay. Kind of muddled uh, muddled right. through it with Matt to kind yeah. of figure that out as uh-huh. a video. But but yeah, I felt like. That was a late in the day addition for people who are fans of the extended stuff because there were yeah. some animated characters in there. Oh yeah, Ahsoka. Ahsoka was in it. Yeah. Kanan Jarrus. There's a few others. Right. Uh, but Dexter Jetster. Dexter Jetster makes an appearance. Grievous, but just the robot parts. Right. Just the worm. <laughs> clink clank clank. <laughs> <laughs> so those worms that nearly killed Padme. Yeah. Just. <laughs> The sand. The sa- Anakin's <laughs> finally made peace with the sand. Oh, he's okay with it. He's yeah. okay with it now. Just yeah. sitting in it. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Uh, and a lot of people have mentioned this, and I tend to agree. It, it's kind of a missed opportunity to bring Hayden Christensen back. Yeah, right. I and thought they were going to. I thought they were going to. You know and, what's weird about And this? that's fan service, obviously. Well, here's the but thing. But so's this. Yeah. But it's not as good. What's weird about this movie is that the fan service, I don't mind fan service. Avengers Endgame is essentially all fan service, but at least it's done well. Yeah. And it was kind of. They should have called it Avengers fan service like Star Wars. The Rise of Skywalker. Yes. That's what they should have called it. I know. People still would have seen it. Right. You know, at, at least they, they built up to it properly. I feel like this movie, it should have either been no fan service or all fan service. Yeah. Like, or at least fan service done better. Mm. I mean, if we'd, ac- we'd actually seen the Force Ghost that, yeah. that you know, had, re- I, that's kind of what I was expecting. Yeah. I'd be like, that would have been cool. I think also at the end when Ray sees the ghost of Luke and Princess Leia, mm-hmm. that's an opportunity to also put in Ben Solo and Anakin Skywalker. Right. It's kind of odd that Ben's not there for one. That seems more important. Uh-huh. But the, you've got your Skywalker lineage yeah. there, right? Well, I mean, that's true. But also, look, I, I have two thoughts about that. One is that... Well, you got to get those white clothes. Well, exactly. <laughs> Takes you a few years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, for, firstly, uh, I guess she didn't know Anakin Skywalker. And I think there might be some rule that you can't see someone if they don't. Yeah. Well, she knew Ben Solo but pretty also well. They, yeah, I know. But here, that's the thing, though, because his last name's Solo. And the, the reason those two are there is so she can look over. When the old lady asks her what her name is, she can go yeah. Ray Skywalker. But I think it also would have been funner if she'd looked back and gone... Ray Moisture Farm. <laughs> I think that would have been funny. She just Ray Double Sons. Yeah. <laughs> double double Hot Sons. Yes. <laughs> Ray, whatever weird creature you're riding. Ray, old woman on a beast. <laughs> That's my name. But I think I think it's genuinely because they're Skywalkers. If Solo, if Ben Solo was also there, she'd have to be like, Solo? I don't know. Ray Ben Solo. Ray Ben Solo. <laughs> exactly, yeah. That's exactly the thing that people hated about Solo. Where yes. they were like, "What's oh, I'll just write solo." That's a, I, you're right. Yeah. It's on. It's very people are like, "Oh, that's a bit on the nose." That, oh, she mm, looked at Skywalker. That being said, said, I know 
I prefer Ray Nobody. Yeah, I do. Yeah. That being said, I do. Oh, there's I, the scene in the thing. There's the scene in the in, when they go to the weird Burning Man situation on that <laughs> on that planet, and the C three is like, the child would like to know what your last name is. <laughs> Tell her your last name. You know, children are always asking what your last name is. This specific species are very interested in that Lab, for some reason. Just, we've, we've landed on the planet that demands to know your lineage, where you're from, <laughs> because that's important. Not the name you give someone that you provide to them. They, yeah. they want to know your... This is the disgrace planet. <laughs> The planet of familial disgrace. That's what this is. Oh, you don't have one. Well, go and jump in that fiery pit. <laughs> yeah, good point. But I also, look, I know it's naff, but I also kind of like the idea that despite whoever you are and your destiny and wherever you're from, you can choose to be what you want to be. Yeah. So that's how I, I mean, take it I mean, if you've got as... Palpatine's powers, obviously. <laughs> yeah. If you're from Palpatine's genetic lineage and therefore you've got incredible force yeah. powers, then you can choose whatever you want to do. Yeah. But Hitler's I mean, Broom secret... Kid, Broom Kid's still Broom Kid, isn't, <laughs> yeah, isn't he? It? Was Broom it's... Kid in this? He wasn't. No, he wasn't. I, didn't I think, I think so. Broom Kid's more a metaphor. And I'm uh, glad they left it like that. Yeah, right. Broom Kid is like an idea of yeah. the future. And like anybody Egg Boy. Can be a, like Egg Boy. <laughs> You're right. Yes. Exactly. exactly. Google Egg Boy. Mm. People yeah. know about Egg Boy, surely. Yeah, but not everybody. You okay, never know. Right. Yeah, right. but he's a national hero. I agree. Yeah. Also, it's Tatooine, but who cares? Right. Because uh-huh. I know, I think Kevin Smith talked about how there's this secret set that he had the opportunity to see. Oh. And he decided not to because it was like the final shot and it would have ruined the movie. Or maybe not the final shot, but it was a big reveal. I thought it might have been the, the, the Crash Death Star throne room. Okay. But it, what it actually was was going back to Tunisia. Well, they, Kevin I think, Smith, go in here. Go into this, no, go they, into this plane. They built it. Because if, okay. ba- yeah. if they went back, I assume. Because if they went back to Tunisia, people would have known that they were there. Oh, that's probably true, yeah. yeah. So I, I think this is a very close Kevin set. Smith, don't go in there mm. because it's a it's series a, of green screens. <laughs> there's nothing there there but we've written Tatooine moisture farm on some pieces of paper yeah that's right so yeah. watch out you get the idea mm. yeah I think that's what it was but that wasn't an interesting reveal because we saw it at the end of Revenge of the Sith we saw it in the original trilogy a couple of times we've seen sand planets Boy, forever yeah <laughs> forever we, ju- we, we just we saw it in, in the Mandalorian movie. oh I was gonna well. say in this movie yes in, exactly in mm. this very movie here's a question for people this is actually a tweet I was gonna say for later but I'm gonna put it now okay uh, it's from Joe he says is the rise of Skywalker better or worse than Return of the Jedi better than Revenge of the Sith and our third movies in the trilogy is ever good uh, also well, maybe, finales are difficult, aren't yeah, they? <laughs> sure. But that, I thought that was an interesting question in terms of wrapping up this trilogy. Yeah. How does it compare between, as as in wrapping up Revenge of the Sith and Return of the Jedi? Because I think this does a worse job than both of those movies at wrapping up the trilogies on the whole. Yeah. There is, def- there is. I mean, I don't. I'm not a huge fan of the prequels, but that closes up a lot of the the, um, the things that those movies do. Yeah. At the very least. Look, I don't like the the prequel trilogy at all, but at least mm. it has a singular vision for the most part yeah. throughout those three, and it and it had a you know at least Lucas knew where it was going. At least he knew part. how many flips he was going to do a movie. Heaps forty a yeah, movie. Yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah, I anyway, know. I just thought that was an interesting question. Mm. And again, you know, Return of the Jedi. You know, people don't like or do not like the Ewoks. Yeah, uh, they're in this though. Yeah, they are two Ewoks. Twewoks. Twewoks. Uh, but you know, it's it's a. I think it's. Probably a pretty solid finale, yeah. and all things considered, it's got the whole Vader and the yeah. Emperor and Luke. I think bit. the start and the end of Return yeah. of the Jedi are really good. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, so you mentioned the Ewoks. Let's talk cameos. Okay, Lando is in it. Yep, he just looks like he's wants to have sex with that woman at the end, right? He's like, "Who are you from? Yeah, Where are you? Exactly Where are you right. at? Here's the thing, though. Yes, Je- I, it's been talked is about. It probably that his daughter. It's probably his daughter because I think in some of the books it's going to be revealed, or maybe it's been hinted at that he had a child stolen. Oh, but I think. Maybe it's pretty chipper, all things considered. Well, it's been a long time, and he's I probably guess. got a lot of kids. But yeah, <laughs> some of them to robots. He's probably like, Phew, that's a relief. <laughs> yeah. Don't have to pay that alimony <laughs> check this month. So I think Lando being reunited with someone, like showing some grief there. and yeah. I think, by the way, I think Billy D. Williams is really good in this. Yeah. When he shows up, he he felt alive and yeah. like he was having fun. Uh-huh. And, you know, and I think maybe he you want to... He did some flips. He did some flips. He did 100 flips. They didn't catch him on film, unfortunately. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Well, he's just happy to be there. Yeah. But don't like don't you, don't yeah. you think he was also him trying to hit, him hitting on his daughter is pretty much part of the course. Oh yeah, Star he Wars. He probably style. knew. <laughs> no, I mean like just yeah, just just characters in Star Wars. You're not wrong. Also, aren't Ray and uh, Ben Solo then technically related? Well, Palpatine created Anakin through the Force. Yeah. Uh, so yes. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, spiritually at the very least. Yeah. Which is still weird. I think so. Uh, the other thing is Han Solo makes an appearance, um, yeah. and I didn't really care 
Huh. Uh, what about you? Here, okay, here's, here's something that I disliked in this movie. I... I'm okay with Han Solo being there. It's lines that are just in there just to be said. They don't mean anything. It doesn't feel like... There's a moment in that where I think uh, Kylo Ren says to Han, I wanted, I know what I have to do, but I don't know if I'm strong enough. I don't know if I'm strong enough. And Han says, well, you are. (laughs) You got any examples or you're you're going to help me out with that? The other thing is he's, he's a memory. Like he's yes. not so that's like you murdered someone and then you imagine them forgiving you. Yeah. Like that's how that is. Again, not to be like this is how I would have done it and I would have made a better movie because I wouldn't. Uh-huh. But I think it would have well, been Well, I would have. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. I would. How dare you? No, I would have. Uh, so <laughs> I'll stand by that. As someone who will never get the chance to make a Star Wars movie, yes. I will. I I I'd make a better one. They have a str- an estranged relationship and that was not a real scenario. It was an imagined scenario because Han Solo can't come come back through the force or whatever, uh-huh. right? So what if it was we had a flashback and he had a memory of Han, of Han Solo teaching Ben how to pilot the Millennium Falcon when he's a boy. And he oh. gives him like a life lesson about like forgiveness and being who you are and, you know, I'll always yeah, love you right, no matter right. what and all yeah. that. Don't you think that would have maybe that been... That worked and you could even say, oh, you know... Would when... you put that in your better movie yeah. than your mate did yeah. you make? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you could say that that memory, you know, when he turned to the dark side, all the, you know, so many memories disappeared, you sure. know, and he couldn't recall them and that's yeah, right, okay. how he was. Yeah. And then, you know, once he's gone through all this trauma, then one of them resurfaces and you go, and he goes, I can do it. That's actually yeah. pretty cool. I can. That's yeah. pretty cool. I also thought Adam Driver's turn to Ben Solo, it felt like a genuine character change and his performance, even his stance, mm. you know, he's kind of hunched and he's, he's really defensive with the lightsaber. Like he holds it up. Like yeah. it's, you know, like it's a quite threatening and <laughs> the, like the one, I always find it quite threatening yeah. to be honest, but I, I think there was some really standout moments from the last year. I wanted like when they, the lightsaber cut Snoke in half. Luke walking out to the battlefield. I know he wasn't real, but I actually really love that. And I yeah, think yeah. It, it's good. But he was real in the sense that again, he was. I mean, he made a difference. He made a difference, and he's yeah. and that you know the, the whole point, and and he was. That's the last of his life yes. force, you know. So yeah. even though he wasn't there doing flips and, yeah. and chopping ATAT legs off or whatever, yes. it would. It's still. I really like that. Yeah. But you may, you may not have. But the only oh, I just said that I did. Okay, yes. I'm talking to people listening, watching. But I am listening and watching. <laughs> sure, sorry. Jeez, Louise. I thought Ray passing him the lightsaber. Yes. And him bringing it out was like a genuine moment in this movie that I loved. Yep. And his stance, how he's kind of holding it the way that a Jedi would, he feels like Ben Solo more than Kylo Ren. Yeah, Ray. right. He does that kind of little shrug. Yeah, right. And he just cuts through him. Yeah. I thought that was terrific. And then he's like, did I do that? <laughs> yes. He did. Yeah. But it would, again, it would have been nice if he was defeating some villains we cared Agreed. about. Agreed. Yeah, that would have made it even better. <laughs> Poor boy. Yeah. But I also, I liked the extension of that previous force power. Me too. But I guess it doesn't kill them if they do it. I also think it would be funny if you were watching those lightsaber fights when they're projecting themselves. Because can you see the other person? No, you can't, I don't think. That's no. fun then. Yeah, it is fun, yeah. They're like, look at this lunatic. <laughs> right. De-aging was pretty good in this. The Luke looks better than the Leia, I felt. Yeah, no, you're right. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, That again lends to my theory that they were going to get Princess Leia to train her. They were yeah, going to do right, that for the whole movie uh-huh. if, she yeah, was, yeah. if she was alive. Now, a lot of people have mentioned this to me because we had a hot scoop and a shot of poop mm-hmm. that Matt Smith was going to play the young emperor in this. Yes. I looked into this, right? Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. maybe that was a shot of poop. I'm not willing to acknowledge that as of yet. I did some background research and some bit of digging. Mm-hmm. Variety did confirm the reputable source that Matt Smith was in this movie. Oh. I think that he was a young emperor clone at some point, either puppeting or or he was going to be a body that he transferred into or whatever, and they took it out to get more Ian McDermott in this. Because he was definitely in this. Right. And there's also a, like an alien character that they went, well, maybe this is Matt Smith, and it's just like whoever. Uh-huh. I don't think you hire Matt Smith to do a weird cam- nothing cameo. I think that that was a major part of this movie that they took out. Interesting. I don't know that for a fact. I've got a okay. video on all the stuff that I've kind of... Okay. Gathered coming up. But well, yeah. at the very least, you're building up your own sort of backlog of fake evidence for that. So that's so good. I don't have to edit that'll, a shot of that'll, have, that'll help you in your case against doing a shot of poop. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway, do you, I don't know, do you think there's any no, I think that's. That? I think that yeah. seems, seems plausible, yeah. I might be wrong. Here's, a, here's one piece of fan service that I think people are largely in favour of, but I think sucks, okay. is at the end, Chewie gets a medal. No, I, think, I don't like that at all. In, I think yeah. in a better movie... That would be a fun piece of fan service. Also, they did it in a comic recently. Oh, did they? So he's got yes. two medals now. Well, he gave that one away. So no, oh. he's got one. He's got one medal. Okay. Yeah. But I, 
He it, gave it away because he didn't want it. To me, this this is this piece of fan service is kind of nail in the coffin of like, God, we'll just look. We've we've done we've 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 fixed all the p- things that the fans have been yelling about for the last couple of years. What else have they been yelling about? Yeah. Let's just check the internet for room. That's, oh, people don't people don't like that Chewie never got a medal at the end of Star that's, Wars. People are also over that. Like that's a joke now. People right. are like, well, he should have got a medal. Yeah, yeah, he should have. Yeah, but it doesn't. He yeah. didn't. You didn't get him out. I mean, he, he did. Because he's a dog man. That's why. <laughs> he would have eaten it. Yeah. Where were they going to put it? I mean, around his neck. For a moment, I thought it was one of the pinning ones. But, but he would have eaten it. He would have eaten it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He would have had to fish it out of his stool. Exactly. He would have eaten it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? I was kind of like, man, that Ben Solo stuff I really liked. Yes. I didn't like the Ian McDermott Palpatine stuff because it didn't feel fleshed out as even he was in the prequels. Yeah. It just was just like, ha, ha. I'm shooting lightning into the sky. Congratulations. Terrific stuff. Yeah. But but there was so much lightning. I know. Oh, my but God. That's more lightning than ever before. That's quite he's possible. he's so powerful. <laughs> it illuminated his million ships. I like the bit where he's like, because there's two of you and that's important, I could drain your life force. Is it? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> yeah, right. Is that like a prophecy? Is that a thing you just realized? Mm. Is that written down somewhere? By the yeah. way, if there's two of them, PTO, you could drain, you could drain <laughs> right. their life force. Yeah, just... You want to explain that more than none? No. Or don't explain it? Just yeah. have him say, I can. Yeah. I drain my force now. I don't know. What, whatever. Just, I don't understand why he couldn't have just been, he heard about a woman who was powerful in the force, or he sensed her, and he was like, I'm going to get that. Get that. Get her to me, or whatever. You yeah. don't have to be like, yeah, it's my daughter. It's my daughter. Granddaughter. Because his son was Derek. Da- what's what's <laughs> Derek's deal? Was he not strong in the force? Why not? No, I don't think. It's, Why not? I think some, you can have kids and they're not. Force is it sensitive. like is it like baldness? Is, does it skip a generation? It can. Which, that's also a myth. Yeah, Mason. Man, I'm really like I. Don't, I mean, because to be honest, mm-hmm. I look at this and I look at Solo, and I think there's way more swings in this than Solo. Uh, like, Solo like, to me uh, was like. Pfft. When you say swings, you mean like uh, they they tried they to do something. They went for a thing, right? Yeah, and Solo to me. I, it felt so generic and safe. Yes. And this, I feel, it had peaks and troughs, but it was trying and doing things. Yeah. And I didn't hate it. So mm. I guess it's best, but I kind of... I this, oh. You know uh, what? It's it, worst. Let's say worst. Yeah. I just didn't think it was great. Yeah. And I just... For me, I wish it was slightly better. There you go. Yeah. This is the, I got an email. This is from, from Kieran Whitehead. Mm. Spoilers. Yep. Rise of, rise, we know a, Kieran. We're in the spoiler section, yeah, Kieran. No, yeah, right. The Rise of Skywalker theatre reactions. Uh, just seen the Rise of Skywalker on its opening night in Ireland. The whole theatre groaned when Ray and Kylo kissed and then openly laughed quite a lot when Kylo died. Yeah. Just wondering if... Just thought this was interesting to report and I wonder if this is common. Yes. Based on my screening of it, really, there were any number of moments that were meant to be like poignant or, or, or you know, big. Like when Chewie went, ah, yeah, 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 uh, and, that? and and people people laughed. Mm. Like any anything that was meant, like when they said Palpatine, you know, Ray, you're pal- you're a Palpatine. People Great laughed, stuff. Yeah. and this wasn't people who were just at the movies to see a movie. Mm. This was at a midnight screening, <laughs> opening night. So it's presumably people who are at least somewhat invested. Yes. And it wasn't just one group of scallywags like right up the back being like, huh, huh, we're drunk yeah. and we're here. It was ass- assorted people throughout smatterings. the Smatterings. Smatterings. There were yeah, smatterings of laughs. Yeah, I don't, Laughters, yeah. Yeah, I think you could have probably done without the kiss, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, mm. turns out that Kylo Ren can do the same thing uh, that... Tom Cruise can in reverse in the mummy. <laughs> he kisses a woman to death. Yep. Kylo Ren to life. It's incredible. Parallels, aren't they? They really are. And they're both about Scientology, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Secretly. Remember that time Ray defeated a big snake with love? Do you remember that? Yeah. It's pretty good, right? No. No, it was bad. Yeah. Because in Star Wars tradition, kill anything you see. Yeah, exactly. She drop, would have chopped it in half. Drop a door quick. on a rancor. Yes. You see a weird, like, hairy, hairy space rhino? Kill it. Steal its baby. Give yeah. it to a gremlin. <laughs> Just let him chomp down its egg. <laughs> num, num, num. It's hairy egg. Oh, oh, oh. Just drink that goopy yolk from the inside. There's probably another one on the other side of the planet or something. And if not, blow that planet up. <laughs> Find another one. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? Yeah. Uh, I've got some reviews here from people who have written in. Okay, I love it. On hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. As from David says, The Rise of Skywalker was just okay. It didn't feel weighty enough for an end of a nine-film saga. Good moments in an otherwise super, super predictable film. 
Alex says, uh, The Rise of Skywalker was good, great in parts, but it's difficult to overlook those moments of fan service that made me sigh in the cinema. Uh, Mike says, As a fan of Seven and Eight, I went into The Rise of Skywalker cautiously optimistic. As a fan of J.J. Abrams' work, I expected at least a serviceable completion to the Skywalker saga. I was let down. Worst movie ever. Mm. Uh, the true Mad Hatter says, I understand that some may not like it due to the plot points and some unexpected outcomes. I loved it. Absolutely best movie ever. It fulfilled my two requirements. Wrap up nine movies and be entertained. Uh, Danny says, It's like a bad roller coaster. It lacks the excitement and just shakes you around till you're dizzy and confused, wondering when it will finally end. A uh, couple more. Luke says... Found Rise of Skywalker disappointing. Didn't seem like Abrams had a story he wanted to tell. Just a collage of scenes he thought Star Wars fans would uh, think are cool, regardless if they make sense or fit together. Worst movie ever. And uh, Armageddon says, loved The Rise of Skywalker. So many great fan service moments. Ray was amazing and a fitting end to the saga. Can't wait to see it again. So there you go. I, that's, I tried to get a, a mix of in, indicative of what people sent through. So mm. anyway, I'm curious... Uh, if people want to leave a comment or hit us up on Twitter of what they think, I'm genuinely interested to know, like, where does this rank? Where does it compare to the other mm. ones? How does it compare as a third film in, in a Star Wars trilogy? Uh, is it better than the movie Solo? Oh, good question. Mm. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. I think they're about the same. How dare you? Yeah. We should have had Alden Einreich's ghost on that bridge with Kylo Ren. Who yeah. are you? <laughs> I'm your dad. I'm your dad <laughs> from... You saw a photo of me once. <laughs> Sorry, a holocron or something <laughs> of me. And it, that's... you can. I mean, you've got a lot of water in your brain right yeah. now. So that's why... You've been stabbed. This is what's yeah. happening here. I, I yeah. haven't looked like this in a while. Yeah. Also, we could, the Harrison Ford w wouldn't do it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm But I'm, I've been blacklisted because of Solo. So this is all I can do now is... Is is uh, is cameos in Star Wars movies? Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. So this has worked out badly for me. <laughs> Thanks for listening to that. Now, as we mentioned up top, this is from our podcast, The Weekly Planet. It's available on all platforms. Uh, if you'd like to check it out, there's, it's got a YouTube channel. It's uh, it's in Spotify. It's in iTunes. It's everywhere you'd ever want it to be. In your ear holes. That's where it's you want it to holes, be. That's right. So if you do want to check it out, we'd love it if you could. Uh, hope you have a good break. Stay safe. Caravan of Garbage will probably be back in the new year some point. And everybody, we would hope so. Uh, we don't know though, do we? <laughs> probably, maybe it'll be back. Uh, th there's at least two in the bank. All right. So all right okay. Cool. Yeah. You'll have at least two more weeks. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and then uh, the long yes. national nightmare will finally be over. That's right. There is some more stuff coming uh, before the end of the year, but we'll be taking a little bit of a break uh, sporadically in January. Cool. Um, so if people could be patient, that would be terrific. Also, it's low YouTube revenue month, and quite frankly, I'm not putting in the effort. <laughs> For fuck all money, Mason. I understand, sure. I only do things for money, you know that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's why I was a teacher for too long. Anyways, <laughs> I'll see you next time. Grab that gem, you guys. We will see you in the new year. I mean, there's still videos coming up. This has got some oh, okay, stuff. right. But, but I yeah, don't know. Right now, don't know, I don't know do that. You don't, I don't know. know. You don't know. I don't know. I just come in here and you say... Say this. <laughs> you, you say, we're watching this bad cartoon. Just say some stuff about it. And I go, okay, when's this coming out? And you go, shut up. And I go, okay. I don't know. You don't know. Some of these are out of order.